What's going on? What's going on? We're back. Bob, we are back. We are back. Shout out to the confident, intelligent, and assertive men out there, the CIA. Shout out to the feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies in the house, the FBI. How are we doing, everybody? Your godfather's back. Let's make sure we got the cameras going. We got camera. Let's take this one off. Well, let's add that one back on. We got camera. One. Camera one always be on some bullshit. But let's go ahead and do camera one. Oh, let's bring some light in here, shall we? Camera one. Hey, camera one. Hi. Camera one is always on its own thing. It's trying to do its own thing. Let's get in there. There we go. Hey, camera one. Camera one. Camera two. Camera three. And hi to note to the new one, camera four. Hey, camera four. How you doing, girl? Sideways shot. And let's put the main one back on screen. Bam. Damn, that's bright. So how's everybody doing tonight? Where the hell did that brightness come from? No, no, none of that. Hope everybody's doing well. I know I am. Godfather's in the house and the house is packed. So let's see what we got going on. Uh, a lot of folks just getting back to school from spring break and things like that. Uh, let's do this too. The music may be a little bit loud. Let's turn that one down a little bit. Um, let's see what's going on in the chat room. Huh, okay. You like camera four? Yeah, like camera four? So, yeah, I got one, two, three, four, five cameras. So, I'm going to tell you right now, I respect the business enough to keep it pushing, keep it moving, keep it doing what needs to be done. And one of the best things you can do is continue to uh, up your game. Continue to up your game. And in that regard, um, you guys uh, can tell the difference between, you know, stagnant production and production that continues to move. I think it's important because optics matter. Some folks may disagree, but your godfather will tell you that image matters. Image matters and optics matter. To that regard, 
This is the main camera. This is the camera I shoot on my like the cinematic stuff. The cinematic stuff, the things that get out there in the field where the you know, it's 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 almost to the level of a red camera. So for those who want to know, this camera is a Sony uh, A7S3. That's what this one is. And then all the other cameras are uh, A6600. That much, that much investment just to change a camera angle. Why? Because um, I think when you're making men's lifestyle content, it is important to represent men at our evolving best in potential. I think that's important. That's what I think. So everything matters. All right. Since we're into, we're almost into the spring, let's go over here, uh, Bentley Bear. Fragrances of the day. Two fragrances. Let's, let's do this one. Two fragrances uh, from the, the, one of the best fashion brands in the world, Chanel. Today's fragrance, I started out with this one. Every guy needs this fragrance in his lineup. You don't have to have 50, 11 million fragrances. A few will do. And one of them is Bleu de Chanel. It comes in three versions, the EDT, the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum, and the Parfum. I think if you're over 30, the, Eau de, the Parfum version is better. If you're 18, the EDT is better. And if you're like 20, you know, 23 to 30, the EDP. But let me tell you, just the hands out, sex, one of the sexiest fragrances ever made, Chanel Ego East. Not Platinum Ego East, Ego East. And it's a, uh, you gotta go directly to Chanel to get this one now. Sandalwood, cinnamon, vanilla, amber, sexiness. Fragrance is incredible. But that's what I'm rocking today. And the candle is uh, the three-week candle from Hotel uh, One in Brooklyn. Is Brooklyn in the house on my way back to Brooklyn in a minute. Uh, that's going to be game change. It's going to change the game when we head back to New York City. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This one's not doing what I want it to do. Function. Turn on the manual, turn the autofocus off on that camera. So it'll stay where it is. Turn off the autofocus on camera one. So, all right. How's everybody doing? Uh, Big Shirley, how you doing? My God. I've been traveling a lot uh, out in the field where the work is real, y'all. And I'm going to tell you something. When I went to get gas today, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. God, I'm out at the gas station getting gas, and I'm going to tell you, they had a pole and a main stage in there. There was women actually on, they had like, you know, state main stage, stage one, stage two. They actually had a pole over there by where the Red Bull is and the soda and the chips. They had a, <laughs> they had a stage over there. And then, like in between the pumps, they got they, they're putting in the main pole. Why? Because women are actually uh, getting out here, getting ready to get on the pole to start dancing for gas. Five dollars and forty cents a gallon. And I went on Instagram and said, uh, "You can say what you want, Big Shirley. Say you don't need a man now." <laughs> Why? It is ten percent more expensive just to live versus last year and surely know that surely knows that and i want you to understand surely knows that and karen knows that shirley's and karen's are all the same in my opinion neither one of these groups of women 
uh, really do well with a man, and that's cool. But here's the here's the main here's the funny thing: is it is time to sell out, and it's a wonderful time. Here is it's time to sell out. There we go, and that's that's the, that's what you saw up front. Why is, why is this woman so happy? This woman right here is so ecstatic that so many men are about to sell out. And she's like, yay! Yay! Here comes Keith Henry. Yay! Here comes Jamal and Kevin and Keith and Aaron and yay! Look at look at her. She's excited. She's like, if they're selling out, y'all. They're selling out. Yeah, it is time to sell out. Why? Because uh, it's time for to start making some deals. And you know what? Uh, femininity. Femininity is the currency which masculine men. Femininity is the product that masculine men want to purchase from women. Not your vagina, not your, not your beauty. We want to purchase your femininity. And men in general are going to pay with their attention. But men of value are going to be far more direct about this thing. So I'm going to be doing uh, I'm going to be dropping a video on Patreon this week and I have a Patreon meeting uh, video that's coming up Tuesday. But here's the thing. I said this year, self-awareness is sexy. Guys, understand something. Women love it when men are self-aware. A man that knows himself is sexy to a woman. Why? A man that knows his limitations. It's like, you know, it's like uh, I had a frat brother in college. This dude came to the yard. He was every bit of five foot seven. And the, he set the yard on fire. Cause he was one of the coolest, smoothest dudes, five foot seven, yoked up. He know who I'm talking about. Then, But before we had him, we had another brother on the yard. Shout out to Mr. Adams. We, on the yard, we had a lot of shorter brothers. And they ran the fucking yard because being under five, eight didn't mess with these dudes. They didn't take no shit. And men respected them and women dug them. They was cool in their own skin. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Shorter men or bigger men, when their image is together, destroy average guys because having your image together as a bigger man or a shorter man, you get confidence points. So I want to talk about guys who want to be in the top 20%, you know, love my average dudes. You know, your godfather ride or die for my blue Henry's, my white collar Henry's, my average guys. Yeah. I think it's funny when I hear people talk about, he looks down on guys who don't have money. You full of fudge and crap. I need you guys to understand something. Start listening real closely to people who say they watch my content. If they say some crap like that, you know they are not watching my content. But I want to say something to my average guys. I the, the financial pressures are getting real. This is why I think you guys should start uh, moving in together and, and sharing resources, sharing housing and, and doing like uh, lions do. Y'all need y'all need y'all own pride, man. Y'all own pride of your own pack. But for the men who are already got their mind right, getting their, got their body right, for the men who are ready to take on the responsibility of a woman, whether you a lion or a tiger, whether you on that you know on that pride or you on that pack, the pride. Is that GQ kind of lifestyle, a guy who needs to work, network, that's that more of the family man, the legacy the lifestyle. Or if you're on that pack, that's my bachelors, you know, my, line, my, my, my tigers and my wolves. You know, you got your pack, but you still may be running this. And let me also say this. It is time to sell out. 
There's only one thing that matters when it comes to picking a a woman. And this now going forward, and it's always mattered, but if she's feminine, her femininity matters. Because femininity is damn near culture at this point. If a woman does not possess femininity, you are not a cultural match for her long term. And that may suck. Why is this important? Well, I think I hear a lot of women talking about, you know, exercising their options and expanding their dating pool and they go for it. Go for it. Let the cream rise to the top. I want all my men of value. I don't care what race you are. I want you to start expanding your options. I want you to start expanding your options and dealing only with women who are feminine. Feminine to your masculine. In that regard, women who move in a feminine way, they want to be your first lady. And there are some very telltale signs of women. Look at how they position themselves online and you can tell whether or not a woman is feminine or not. They're, I tell you, we have a lot of women that are, that are out here who believe they're feminine and they, be, they, be, they may be cooler than masculine chicks, but feminine wants to support masculine. And why is this important? I'm not throwing shade or dispersions on anything. I'm just saying to the guys, it's time for you to start selling out. It is time for you to sell out to your masculinity. It's time for you to sell out to your hood, your, 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 your kinfolk, anybody that's keeping you attached to who you were. Because I am sorry, this is about evolution and growth. And Christ had to leave Nazareth because he was just uh, David's son. In order to be on your purpose, you're going to have to separate yourself from a lot of people. You're going to have to separate yourself from a lot of things that people use to control you. And one of the ways they use to control you is upon your your mate selection. Now, only men, only men in general, black men in particular, are the only ones who are really, truly targeted this way. As a black man, you're told that you need to go out and compete with the rest of the world, but you must remain loyal. And I and I say Yes, remain loyal to you, you and your purpose. But when it is time for you to take that next step, you need to select from the best, most feminine, most agreeable woman that fits on with your purpose in your in your area and pick one. A lot of people will call that selling out. I call it buying in. Make no mistake, if you're if you're over here to be a renegade, a, 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 a man roaming the earth, making his own rules, not abiding to anybody, that sounds really nice. But you don't build anything with guys like that. If you don't realize that there is a point in time in life where you're going to have to buy in in order to move up. And a lot of guys don't like this conversation. Hey, man, I'm not telling you what to do. If you can get the kind of success you want, if the mission is more important than to you and, and, and of your autonomy, cool. But you must accept what, what comes along with that. And I'm talking to the men who have a mindset that they want something outside of themselves. Gentlemen. Ladies, I have clients worldwide. When I do my consults during the day, I talk to people worldwide. And there's one thing that's unanimous. These, there's a group of women that want to get with this group of men, and they just need to be able to find one another. Because we got so many people that are out there saying that one thing and want to do another. Gentlemen, Ask yourself a question. Have you ever dated a feminine woman? 
Have you ever have you ever been have you ever been well treated by a woman? Seriously, I've told the story about the first time I had somebody act, a woman actually do the most selfless thing when I was sick. Came over to my condo, brought groceries, made soup, brought my favorite pizza. While she was cleaning up the house, disinfecting and all that other stuff, made sure I was taken care of, topped me off and left. I was confused. You hear stories about men talking about they're going out of the country and then they're being around women who really like men for men and understand what how to treat a masculine man. And understand, a masculine man doesn't mean a brute. Stop letting people tell you you're not masculine because you ain't walking around in Timberlands and, 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 and all this other bullshit. Sidney Poitier <laughs> was none of that. Neither was Malcolm X. Stop letting people tell you you're not a masculine man because you actually, uh, anyway. That's one thing you got to understand, gentlemen. As you start to sell out, you're going to hear a lot of shit from the people who cannot buy in. See, the people who don't want you to sell out, they want you to stay around them because they cannot or they are not willing to buy in. Make no mistake. If they don't want to play ball, Godspeed. But I want the kind but the men who build this world have to collaborate with other men, systems, things like that. And you are going to have to play ball. This is why social skills are so important. Networking skills, the ability to cooperate. Get the likes up or we shut the chat down. And to this regard, uh, understand something. Gentlemen, the, the woman you have on your arm is either an asset or a liability. There is no gray area. If you spend more time managing the emotions, if you spend more time managing your woman than your purpose, you got a problem. Oh, shit. Oh, oh. If you spend more time managing your woman than your purpose, you got a problem. If your woman is, if you, huh, I'm about to, oh, Jesus. There are some women out here who are so used to having everything given to them. Or so used to the world, and especially in the West, that they really don't know how to support a man. And this is no shade at them. Understand something. Guys, we live shorter lives than women. We get into our value later than women. What does that mean? Gentlemen, you don't have time to waste. Women have to, women get their value and their beauty up front. They have to maintain. Men have to earn their value and we live shorter. So it is time to sell out because you don't want to be a 40 year old man out here. Well, most men, I don't say you, most men don't want to be 40 year old nomad bachelors. I know it sounds sexy in a lot of spaces, and the problem is most guys who say that is because they don't have access to the kind of women they, they, they don't have access to the kind of feminine women. And they're not willing to sell out. So what are you saying, Kevin? Are you saying that black men need to get with non-black women? No, I'm saying black men need to get with feminine women. I'm not just talking to black men. I'm talking to all men. It's time to sell out for femininity. See, excellence one of the things that's funny about being black is everybody else can be good at what they do and excellent at what they do and don't have to say black, 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 black all the time. But as black people, as a black man, you often feel pressured to have to always reaffirm your blackness. Fuck that. We can change that too, gentlemen. Just start being a thorough man. Who are you trying to reaffirm your, yourself to? People above or below you? People who have growth in mind or people who want to keep you stuck? This is war. And the war is for your purpose and your position. 
And guys, no matter what you do in this world, what you accomplish, once you, once you, wh- who are you going to leave it to? What is your legacy? I mean, I want you guys to really think about this. What is your legacy? All right. Well, say goodbye to the chat room. Uh, I, I told you. What is your legacy? Are you controlled with the um, are you controlled by the opinion of people who, who aren't in the rooms you're in and don't want to go to the places you want to go? Are you controlled by the people who aren't in the rooms you're in and aren't in the places where you want to go? If so, you got a choice. And I'm going to tell you what I do in these situations. Um, Every now and then I prune my life. I prune my life. And this is before I even got to YouTube. I sit around and look at my life and say, where am I at and where do I want to go? What kind of information am I taking in? What kind of things are, 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 what kind of stuff am I consuming? And if it's not in line with who I am or where I want to get to, I cut it off. And this way, I'm a minimalist. See, I believe in, let's go back to image. Fit is more important than brand. Fit over fashion. Quality over quantity and minimalism. Travel light, go far. You don't need 20 dudes when three will do. You don't need a wardrobe. I was talking to MTR and I was telling some stuff about his, uh, you know, when he was in Las Vegas, I'm like, you don't, a man doesn't need 300 items in his wardrobe when a hundred will do. Just get the best quality you can afford long term and, and get it going. Every guy, every content creator, or, or a person I've tried to collaborate with in any big way, I always talk about image because it matters so much. And what they do with it is up to them. But see, the thing is, guys, you got to ask yourself a question. Are you the resource to your group? And if so, you need another group. And in order to sit down at the quote unquote round table of equals, You got to get away from that square. You got to get away from that straight table or that square table. Because one of the biggest things that keep you from selling out is shame. uh, And others, jealousy and envy. I hope we're going there. Any woman you're dealing with in your personal life needs to bring lightness to you. And I'm going to tell you, I have seen some of the most beautiful, I don't, I don't deal with unattractive women, but I would tell you pretty women, attractive women, if they're not equally as light, aren't worth it. And this is, And why is this important? Because far too many women today are spending too much time on their outer instead of their software. And this is why when it's time for you to start looking for a woman, you got to go with a woman who already is there, not in process, not who wants to change, not who wants to get better. So gentlemen, It is time to sell out for femininity because the hardcore reality of it is this. You live a shorter life. Every year you wait to find that perfect woman is one year out of your legacy, one year out of the input for your kids. You want to start a family by your mid 30s or 40s. Hear me now. If you start a family between 35 and 40, black men, you're you're a middle-aged black man at 35. I mean, you're a middle-aged black man at 34. That's why I laugh when I hear a lot of these people talk, these old dudes and these old dudes. Dude, if you're over 34, you're a middle-aged black man. Shut up. Middle age, and you got to ask yourself, 
at what age do I really want to start doing this? Because if you got a life expectancy of around about 70 years, you want to have some good years to input into your kids and then some years to enjoy it. Do you really want to leave when you got toddlers or, or people in their teens? So let's ask the hard question. Kevin, are you saying that black men should start dating non-black women? Yes. Yep. Without a doubt, yes. Mm-hmm. I say, I say the black men should start dating feminine women. Black or otherwise. Uh-oh. Uh, let me turn up the lights so you can see my face. Let, let me turn up the lights and switch the camera so you can see my face so there's no doubt in what I'm saying. Black men should start dating feminine women first. Full stop. Feminine women. Now, that means that the mothers of the women that are out there can choose to raise their daughters to be feminine, beautiful, inspirational, Fit, friendly, cooperative, and submissive, childless, and black, and white, and Hispanic, and Asian, and Middle Eastern, and or other. Or they can raise them to be some variation of independence over femininity. And then let everything else sorted out itself. Just like as a man, understand your woman will always come second to your purpose. And a woman that you deal with needs to already come preloaded with that expectation that she will always be second, that she is not your partner, that she is not standing beside you, that she's standing behind you, that her Instagram and her Facebook and her social media don't need to really exist unless she actually has a brand that she's managing. Most women, in my opinion, don't really need to be on social media, and especially if you want a relationship, because you're trying to get attention from validation outside of the primary focus is your man. I'm going into it. And the thing is, gentlemen, every other group of men in the world can do this. Now, are you saying sell out and leave black women? I'm saying no. Upgrade. Femininity is an upgrade for the modern woman, the modern woman of any race. Femininity is an upgrade for the modern woman of any race. Modern women have been told to be independent. Femininity and independence don't go together. Femininity and interdependence go together. Masculinity and independence go together. So if you want a legacy a relationship that's going to last, you need a feminine woman who automatically understands she's going to come second to a lot of other things. And she not only is OK with that, she likes that and expects it. So it won't be a shock to her when you start doing man shit. Run till that. Any woman who wants any woman who wants to compete for a man of value, the die has been set. Any woman who wants to compete for a man of value needs to start competing with your femininity. And feminine women don't come with somebody else's children. Unless they are ex-wives. And in very specific circumstances. She's been a divorce, she's been widowed. Or she was divorced with serious cause that men would accept. These are just general. There's always gray area and there's always nuance. But why don't I, why don't men why do men need to not talk about gray area and nuance? Because modern because women today will find a way to fit in the gray area. No, you guys saw, see today I wore black and white because I always tend to wear black and white. 
Does this mean that if you're a modern woman, you cannot have a man of value? Uh, not a masculine man of value. Not the kind of man that you really want. He may have money. But what we have seen is women tend to leave men who waver in their masculinity. And to that regard, I'm going to use Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, Pete Davidson. When Kanye was, uh, Kanye, as uh, what we know about the relationship, Kim, whatever you think of Kim, she did all, she offered up several million to help Kanye out of a pinch. She married him, but she made her bones on being a public figure. That is never going to go away. And if you're a man who cannot deal with a woman who is a public figure, you cannot make her a housewife. Not a traditional housewife. She has a brand. That's foolish. Gentlemen, if you marry a Kardashian or a Rihanna or somebody, and let me say something about Rihanna. Rihanna, billion dollars can do what the fuck you want. I know that's not going to be a popular opinion. <laughs> Shit. When you make a billion, you can do pretty much do what the hell you want to do. Stop worrying about what Rihanna does. How many women going to have a billion dollars? That's nine zeros. <laughs> but even Rihanna, Rihanna, she still chose to have a man that you deem more masculine than Drake, certified lover boy. No diss, bro, but you know the story's out there. How can I talk about this? Because I was a baby face beta male sucker ready for I was all kind of, I've been over there down bad not where I needed to be didn't get taught these kind of things and you take the lumps that come along with it I would never do it again and you must always be on the lookout gentlemen for women who are going to challenge your masculinity and when they challenge it you must respond to the challenge because the challenge is natural. Feminine women only challenge your masculinity when they feel unsafe or insecure. But it's not their first instinct. Masculine women challenge your masculinity for dominance. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Masculine women challenge your masculinity for dominance. This is why you see so many women giving men shit tests. And things like that. So, gentlemen, I'm going to tell you, number one, you need a woman. If you are a man of value, whether you blue collar or white collar, hit squad, hit squad in particular, 18 in the Esquire phase of life, 18 to 30. Start dealing with women that tilt the room. Deal with quality, gentlemen. Your dick matters. Stop putting it in everything. Put your penis only in things that you will be proud to stand by 20 years later. Less is more. Stop worrying so much about women for sex and fun. That ain't their purpose. Damn sure not in your life. You guys between 18 and 30 are so fortunate to have this information. And the, and. And the, and the thing is, a lot of women fear this kind of stuff because it makes them have to declare. All right, let me talk about something else. Uh, I'm going to open the call line uh, in just a second. Uh, uh, but but I got, I'm going to help. I'm going to help in this regard, though. I'm going to help in this regard. I'm going to help out my men first and the women in regard. One of the things that's been missing, uh, high value man. I didn't make the concept up. I just put some parameters to it that can stand the test of time, a political system, a culture, whatever, and it's pretty much been agreed upon by most people. That's why it stayed around. And the concept of modern woman. There's a concept, uh, one of the biggest issues today is women are listening to the stuff we're talking about, but they don't have models. To that regard, next week, I'm gonna drop the series on ideals to shoot for. 
ideals to shoot for. Um, just like I talked about being the Esquire phase of life, 18 to 30, and whether or not you're going to go GQ or, or the Bachelor. Here's some things that I want to uh, drop for you. For you, uh, Remember I was talking about the women and the Avengers, the Averagers? <laughs> Here we go. Here's some of the here's. So you guys are going to start seeing videos of me talking about archetypes. The attorney. She's a ball breaker. She's masculine and she's controlling. You're going to see me start making videos about an attorney type female. Uh, the marketer. The marketing person, the girl that's in the marketing advertising. She also tends to have an MBA. This is, she's the extrovert, the attention-seeking chameleon. Oh, yeah, that's her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the realtor. Remember the attorney and the realtor? The realtor. They love, they're around high-value men all the time. Uh, they're hopeful. They tend to be attractive. And because they tend to see the finer things in life, they tend to be very driven. You can work with a realtor. As long as she's not a chameleon or a Jezebel. The doctor, the PhD. I'm a PhD. Introvert, emotionally stunted, um, and tends to be a little bit uh, awkward. But you can you could possibly work with eh, more on that later. I don't overstep. The administrator. Big Shirley and Karen Central. This is where your HR, office managers, customer service. Oh, yeah. The administrator. Then the creative. Mm. The sexual, the sexually liberal. Very fluid, great area, resist structure, Jezebel spirit. Oh, yeah. So which one would have been the sapphire? The sapphire would have been, I'm out anyway on that later. And then we got a couple of another, then we have, a, and all of these women can be some sort of entrepreneur. They could be some sort of modern woman. But we have one, I will say there's an entrepreneur title too. The entrepreneur can be in those other categories, but she also could be a standalone category. But a couple of things that come along with entrepreneur, they tend to be modern women. Because independence. Modern women, because they tend to be independent and a lot of them tend to be single mothers. So I want you guys to think of everything that I just ran down. Oh, let me turn. If y'all get up, get over 5,000 likes. Uh, you know what? Let's do it this way. Get a thousand likes if y'all want the channel to come back. But the chat stays off. Come on. Get them up and hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit it. Hit it. Come on. Come on, stop tripping. Hit the like button. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Come on. Come on. Get it up, get it up, get it up, get it up. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So y'all saw that. Y'all see the archetypes coming. So each one of these women is going to get their own video. These women are going to be in skits that I'm going to be doing. Yeah, I'm involved in the content. So the live stream shows are going to be here. <clears throat> but the pre-recorded videos are coming back. 
you know, see me doing the interview segments. Y'all going to see the podcast develop. But I'm also going to be doing on Instagram. If you're on Instagram and you want to send me videos to react or respond to, that's where you do it on Instagram. Um, and I will check them out. But just talking about these concepts without having something to talk about uh, doesn't make it connect as much. So your grandfather going to take that on. I got these women that I'm going to be talking about and you'll see it just like uh, we got it, the same thing for the men. Um, let's talk about the male version. Let's talk about the male version, shall we? Oh, come on. All right. The male version. All right. So. The men, these, the seven, the seven or eight eye women I talked about, different archetypes, uh, and there surely, and th surely there are more. But most women, eighty percent of women, will fall under some of these categories. The only ones I that I didn't pull out in particular are going to be uh, military and uh, police. I don't need that. Men, we got an overarching legal. For men, legal attorneys is his own archetype. Then the next one, sales and marketing, where I would fall under. Guys like myself will fall under sales and marketing. Then we have medical and dental. Then we have engineering, architecture, STEM, science, technology, engineering, math. A lot of guys will fall under that. Then we have accounting and finance. And then we have the larger group of tradesmen, infrastructure and logistics. Make videos about these guys too. Each one of these guys, each one of these people, I'm going to give them a name, a story, and everything else. Yeah, we're going to make a whole damn universe around these people. You're going to see these characters interacting on videos. And here's the funny thing. Why is this important? Because if I can help men start to identify archetypes of women that work well with, because it's about a negotiation, Certain archetypes of women work better with certain archetypes of men. You guys like the concept? What do y'all guys think? You guys like the concept? So it's one thing for me just to sit around and talk about a concept, but it's another thing if I talk about, uh, y'all want to help me name them? The female attorney, what do y'all want to call her? Because in uh, Sex in the City, her name was Miranda. So let me tell you, in Sex in the City, which one of these characters, which one of these characters in Sex in the City would have been Samantha? Samantha would have been the marketer, the event planner. This is a woman that's all over everywhere. Who would have? Who would have? Who, Charlotte would have been. Charlotte would have probably been closer to uh, the doctor or the PhD. All right, let's open the chat room, ladies. And here's the funny thing. Women in general, I need you to ask yourself one question, ladies. Who is your feminine role model? Who is your feminine role model, your feminine ideal? And you really need to look at this woman and ask, is she my feminine role model or ideal based first on her looks or based first on how men think about her? Because it's time to sell out. It's time to sell out for femininity, gentlemen. Selling out for femininity. I think every man deserves a feminine woman, but make no mistake, it doesn't matter what I think. Femininity is in short supply, gentlemen. I, and this is where it's going to be harsh to hear. Femininity is in short supply in today's Western Recording world. Recording in progress. So like anything else that's in short supply, it's it's going to go to the uh, it's in high demand. That does not necessarily mean it's going to go to the highest bidder, but you'd be a fool to think that you can just get it because you a man and you deserve it. Uh, uh That ain't how that work. Good luck with that. But I'm not that naive. Should men sell out? 
That's the question, ladies. Should men sell out? In particular, I'm not going to put this in the in the. But I really want to hear from. Um, I want to know why women, modern women, especially why you can't get the men of your group. Why? Why should men should have to sell out should be a troubling concept to a lot of women, not whether or not men should sell out. That's the question. Uh, I'm going to ask the poll. I'm going to ask the question in, as a poll. Should men sell out? Yes or no? And you know what the question is. You know why the question is asked. You know why the question is asked. Shout out to uh, Cheers and Blessings. Pre- appreciate it. Shout out to A Free. Say gas money. Boy, if you live in the Boston area, uh, if you want to attend the Patreon event, understand something. Every four to six weeks, we're going to have a Patreon event. The first one's going to be in Boston. If you want to attend the Patreon event, you must pass the background check. Everybody has to pass a background check. Everybody has to pass a background check. So if you want to show up to these events, it's going to be a three or four day event with activities, dinners, interactive stuff, kick ass, grown folks type shit. You should be able to pass a simple background check. We're going to check who you are. We're going to look at it. Yeah, we're going to. Yep. And security will be tight, (laughs) tight, very tight. Uh, I'm telling, I'm saying that so the men can understand and the women can feel uh, comfortable because the kind of women that we're wanting to attend the events, they aren't for the streets. And here's the thing. Um, there will not be a lot of pictures posted of the event. Privacy will be required because Here's the thing. If I posted, we posted pictures. I don't want any of these people's person that personal lives messed with. If they choose to post their own pictures, that's cool. Boston, and we're gonna go west. Your godfather has never been skiing, but that's on the it's on the it's on the agenda. Can't wait to Aurora Vale someplace. You know. I ain't getting on a ski slope. I don't know about that one, but we shall see. The call line is open, ladies. The call line is open. Should men sell out? And I got to ask a question to black women in particular. If the if the men, if the black men that you want, the if the kind and caliber of black men you want started actively dating non-black women, marrying them. If this became like a national initiative to, repo- to, to move the black population, think about it. I've heard some crazy numbers on our population is uh, the black community has been at 13% for my lifetime. And most people we three kids. So if a man wants three kids, he's going to have to have a wife that stays. Because it does no good for a man to do all the things he does just to get married to a woman and then her to divorce and take the kids. He'd be better off keeping his money. So if you got any questions. Uh, oh, also, oh, no, no. We need to hit that. Uh, oh, no. Y'all tripping. No, 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 no. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing? Oh, man, y'all, y'all, no. We're not, no, okay. Everybody in the chat room, in the Zoom room. Oh, y'all want to come in? Are we going to need at least 30 people to hit the super chat button? Because outside of A-Free and these two people, nope, nope, we'll shut this thing down. Nah, I get it. People have asked me to open the chat room 
up to subscribers. Uh, and I'll tell you why the chat room is members only, because um, social media platforms, chat rooms, comment sections have been inundated with bots and craziness. This is across platforms. This is why you guys see in the comment section, people, my profile picture keep popping up with WhatsApp and y'all know that ain't me. Uh, but we're responsible for our communities. And in order to do that, I want to keep the comment, the conversation going amongst people who want to at least be involved. OK. Number one, number two. Well, I'm talking about the archetypes for young men. I'm also, also in the next two weeks, I'll be dropping videos on uh, image suggestions for all phases of life. You know, if anybody who sees me out in the world, they'll tell you I don't walk around in a suit 24 seven, but you still can look like a grown put together man, regardless of your age and your masculine archetype. OK. Um, ladies. Hit the chat room, gentlemen, uh, I'll take a I'll take a few calls from guys. But if you're a man, the only way I'm going to speak to you is you must be on camera. And I'm going to ask that um, you be able, to, uh, be able to speak on the fact that you can sell out. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why this is important for men. Because whether whether I like whether we like it or not, gentlemen, women don't care about what men that they don't find attractive think. OK. That's all women. Women have evolved to be dismissive and not care about men which they find attractive, whether that's successfully whether that's that's money sexually across the board and that's not unique to black women so are you a man that's attractive to women that's my question and if so uh look here dude then you can tell me then you can say something to the ladies all right, I'm gonna go ahead and balance you. Uh, Cause you come up here all the time with this logo, and I never see you come in here with a logo. Your video's not on, okay? When I, if you come over to Zoom and your video is not on, I'm going to automatically remove you. Hello, Miss Monet. Connect your audio, uh, sweetheart. Um, I'm a member of Cap. I, I, hey, Miss Monet, how are you doing? I'm gonna mute you. As a member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, yo baby, yo baby, yo. Every woman that's married to Kappa, a uh, Kappa, is a silhouette. She could be a Delta, she could be an AKA, she could be, she could be in another sorority, or she could be nothing. But every woman that marries a Kappa becomes a member of the Silhouette Organization. Why is that important? More on that later. <laughs> More on that later. Hi, how are you? You muted yourself. Yeah, how old are you? 30. 30. Okay, do me a favor. Um, could you set the phone down because it's going to be... Is it like on a table or something? I can get it there. Okay. Are you married, single, what? Married. All right. What do you got for us? Well, you were asking the question, um, do I think men should sell out? Uh -huh. And I think that they, I think that it's reasonable if they, with all things considered and what they put up with, with the community, I okay. think it's reasonable that they do that. Okay. Is, uh, how long have you been married? Uh, five years. Okay. You have any uh, sisters? I do. I have an older sister and a younger sister. I'm a middle child. 
Okay. Our, uh, it shows that your microphone is still muted. Can y'all hear her? She just muted herself. Unmute yourself. Say something. I'm talking. Can you hear me? I can hear her. Can y'all hear her? Okay, well, it says that you're muted, but uh, I can hear you. So you is your older sister married? Yes, she's married too. Okay. Well, um, she's, in the military. she's in the military. Okay. Yeah, she's a military wife. All right. So uh, do you have any sons or do you have any, any children, any sons? I have a daughter, an 11 year old. Okay. I was a baby mama before I got married. Okay. Well, through hook or crook, you got there. So, um, my <laughs> question is, Hey, I, I, okay. So how are you, uh, how are you going to teach your daughter if it, to land a husband? Uh, well, what I do now is I try to show her through, you know, how I operate around the household when my husband is present uh -huh. um, and just, uh, really that and try to help her understand as she gets older, when she actually gets into, you know, dating, probably tell her just the differences in how boys and girls think, how men, how boys are more like simple and girls are a little more complex. So just, I guess, trying to help her understand at least how men think and operate so she, she can be more cooperative. Right. Um, all right. So. You're going to teach. Okay. So you're going to teach her, you're going to teach her the difference between boys and girls. But my question is, what are you going to teach yeah. your daughter? What are you going to teach your daughter to do for a man? Uh, I think, I don't, I think it would, I guess trying to figure out what type of, girl she's going to be if she's going to be masculine if she chooses to be more her masculine or her feminine energy i think that will kind of determine which type of man she should even go after that, that okay sense? what do you mean if she's more masculine in her energy i mean some some women are just more, more masculine they like to be bossy and i don't think it's anything all right ma, all right now now we're gonna have an issue ma to... now we're gonna have an issue ma uh-oh Okay. Yeah, because I mean, I have a daughter, okay. but today we're so freaking hands off with our kids. We're supposed to teach them or show them what's best, not leave it up to them to sure. decide. Okay, let's just go down your path. Let's just say she's leaning more towards masking. You just gonna let her rock it out like that? What kind of outcomes? She, what no. kind of outcomes do masculine women tend to have in life regarding relationships? Uh, they tend to be unhappy in their relationship because they get mad that the man doesn't step up and be a man or they tend to be single <laughs> in my experience. Okay. So how does that going to help? It doesn't. You're right. I, I probably should come up with some type of plan. She's 11, so I haven't really even thought about you know, but see, that's the problem. That's the problem. That's the no. problem. Thank you. And I mean, no disrespect, but so many women are worried about themselves. This is why when you said you're a baby mama and you got married, I'm like, okay, cool. You, you by hook, crook, you got married. But I, I can make a fair case that women today are far more worried about their happiness than their than their daughter's future success. To the 11 years old. She's already six years behind in teaching. You're supposed to have been teaching this stuff since since four or five years old. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's how, that's the way. I'm playing catch up. Well, but but are we though? Because you're saying eleven. At what age do okay. what age do you think you should start? What age were you thinking you're going to start teaching her? Well, around now. So now she she's full time with her dad. She lives with her dad. So she gets that 
male structured household energy that I know she wouldn't get with me. So I thought that okay. that was better for her to be with him. And as she gets older, you know, I can really start to dive into those types of. Oh, I'm conf- now I'm kind of confused. You said you were married. Yes, I'm married. But does he have any children? He has an adult child, an adult son. Okay. We don't have any children together. Does he travel a lot? Yes. So, so when are you a wife? He works all the time. So if you don't have um, a daughter at he home, comes home, okay. Because I just want to get the understanding. If how many days a week is he traveling? Um. So his his schedule kind of shifts every like ninety days or so. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. um, the past ninety days we were pretty much together. He would leave like for a week out of the month. So we'd be home, you know, together a lot when we were mm-hmm. in LA, and then we come back to Maryland. Um, before that, it was he'd be gone for a month. So we see each other every other month. And y'all have been, been married for how long? Again? To do that. Five years. And how long has your daughter been with her father? Uh, for really about three years. So I got to ask, ma'am. Usually, okay. is men want to see the sons go off with their fathers? not the daughters that doesn't oh, make he wasn't, a lot of, he wasn't necessarily with it no he wasn't in agreement with it but he definitely but, wasn't in agreement but. agree with agreement with you sending the daughter to him ultimately yeah but okay but he ha- but you don't have any younger children you don't have any stepchildren and your husband, so the way this is sounding is you just kind of doing your own thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I do some work for him sometimes, like little projects, but I haven't. No, 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 no. Why do you send your daughter to be with her daddy? I thought that was the best thing for her. I still do think it was the best thing. I think I grew up without a dad and I had very little discipline. So, and I had her like when I was 19. So I I felt like I needed to take that time or take time and kind of get my life together. And in that time, I found my husband, upgraded my life. And now I'm able to, you know, step up and be a parent in a supportive role. So, Okay, um, I guess what you're saying is that it's you ch- let her be with her dad because you were immature. Yeah, my yeah, his life is more stable than mine, and I thought that you know that's better for her. Yeah, it's better for her, but I'm to be with a more know. mature parent. And how much older is he than you? Her dad is about five years older than me. Okay, so she has a stable father and a loving father. Correct. But she's not learning how to be a woman. No, she's not. That was the that's the sacrifice. That's the trade off that I made. I'm really so I have to squeeze those. I'm really trying to. Into I'm really trying to. Summer vacation. I'm really trying to restrain certain things, but. When do you, when is your daughter going to become the priority? Her 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 being becoming a woman, learning how to become a woman. When is that going to become the priority, and not you getting your shit your stuff together? I plan to have that done in three years when she goes to high school. I plan to stop traveling and stay at home to you know. Stop traveling. What are you traveling for? I do real estate and then my husband travels too. So I kind of just do real estate wherever he is. (laughs) Okay. Um, (laughs) 
You having any more kids? No, I don't plan to. Were you, were you raised as an only child? No, I'm a middle child. Well, I'm going to be honest, ma'am. I can I already can kind of understand what the chat are going to think and the moms are going to say, but I get that you had your child young, 19, but that's not young. 13 is young. 19, you know, uh, you're married. You, you and your husband have your own life. You're, it sounds like you're doing your own thing. That's what it sounds like. Your husband's out working. You're a realtor, so you do real estate wherever he goes. Uh Pretty much it. Yeah, but I'm asking about the daughter. What kind of wife is she going to be to a well, yeah. What kind of wife is she going to be to a man? That's <sighs> that's what that's what we care about as men. We care about the women because my my question for women is: Do men have any say? And what women do. In particular, black men. Do we have any say in what black mm-hmm. women do? No. That's why we need to that's why we don't need y'all. Women do what they want. Yeah, that's why that's why we don't need to deal with women who don't and this is why this whole don't judge us, don't rake us. The, if, if we're not supposed to have any say in what y'all do, y'all do, women do what they want to do, so we don't need women like that. Not you, but I'm just saying women like that. Because any group of men has to have input and say over the women, not just the women. Let me say this. Black women, let me tell you something. You need to knock this bullshit off, thinking that the only man y'all need to listen to is the man you're sleeping with. Every group of men on this planet has agency over the women the women they choose to mate with and all of the other ones y'all ain't gonna change that dynamic just because y'all strong and independent we're just not gonna deal with you so my question is for you as a mom knowing that men want women who are going to be supportive and a support system and you know what relationships are. How are you helping? How do you how do you plan on helping prepare your daughter to become a supportive wife and have successful relationships? And what I think I'm hearing you saying is, when I get myself together in another couple of three years, then I'm gonna start at fourteen. I don't think you have that. I don't. Yeah, that's pretty much. Um, I don't think that's reasonable, man. 14, man, she'll be fully a, soft, a freshman or sophomore in high school. I guess, I guess the way I looked at it, like she's 11, so she's about to go through her, her growth cycle. So there are conversations that need to be had about how to handle your own body, how to work with your hair texture during, during puberty. I uh-huh. think there's other conversations that need to be had because she's not, the, the females at um, her dad's house are more masculine. Um, and so the females at her dad's house? You said the females at her... Hold on, I want to be clear. You said the females at her dad's house? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, so her her dad, um, he lives with... <laughs> so weird. Um, her dad's like a, he's like a mama's boy. So he lives in his apartment with his mother, his second daughter, or his second baby mom, and his uh, best friend and his son and my daughter. I know that just made the story so much worse. Yeah, it really did, man. It really did. I know. Because you just out doing what I mean, ma'am, I've got to be honest. <laughs> you put your daughter in that and you out living with your husband doing what y'all... So, I can... Okay, so one thing I, I could say, too, is the blending of the family with my my life with my husband and my daughter she's like resistant to it because he's from a different culture so it's like a totally different you know household experience for her and she doesn't you know really like it and so it, what, it, what it ended up doing was causing friction between them two causing friction between him and i trauma those, trauma those trauma you experience yes. your 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 
You no, ma'am, you are inflicting massive trauma onto your child. Okay. She doesn't want to go. And and if he's that living with his mom and baby mom, ma'am, why would you put a child? Well, she don't want to live with me. She don't want to live with me. She want to live. She would prefer that than the strictness of the household that we create. Strictness? My what do you mean? Chinese. You mean he's a patriot? He's Chinese. You mean he? So, I, trust me, sweetheart. I know who. I, I, I yeah. three black belts. I, I mean, trust me. Yeah. I, I, they don't put up with that yeah. shit. But here's the question. Ch- mm, mm, bite your tongue, Kevin. The strictness. Yeah. yeah. The strictness. Are, <laughs> But there's still structure. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so it was better to allow her to go into chaos than structure. Yeah. I guess. Sounds like it was, I'm going to be honest, man. I'm going to be honest, man. It sounds like it was easier on you. Definitely was easier on me, for sure. Then that's fucked up. That's fucked up. I didn't put it, I didn't make the choice for me though. I made the choice looking all things considered. So it's a better family. So ma'am, so ma'am, a a daughter that's about to go through puberty and development, Mm -hmm. it's better for her to be in the house with her mama's boy, daddy, who's living with his mama, who's living with his second baby mama versus being with her mother and her productive husband. No, it's not better for her to be there. No, it's better for you because you can do what the fuck you want to do. Your husband's out traveling, you out doing whatever, maybe even, ma'am, selfish. That's why I go all the way back to and ask you what kind of wife you're going to teach. Well, it depends on what kind of woman she turns out to be. If she turns out to be sane, it'll be a a blessing. I was... I'm not going to tell my daughter's business, but I'm going to tell you, when a child has their cycle for the first time, I'm lucky that I'm a man that was raised around a lot of women that that didn't freak me out. But there are things that a daughter is supposed to learn. Mm. Mm. Ma'am, yeah. your daughter, has she had, have you had any therapy? Have I had therapy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have therapy. It's pretty infrequent, but. Well, I'm just going to say, without knowing all the, the complexities, ma'am, you had a child that you said young, but it sounds like your life is pretty, pretty cool. You married your husband. Does he do well financially? Yeah. Yes or no? I mean, he kind of hesitated. Is he doing OK? I'm sorry. Or? No, I said yeah. I said yeah. No, he does well. He does and well. Do, and are you paying mortgage are you the real the stuff you do real do you have to pay bills i mean i know you make money but do you have to pay everything that i huh no i don't have to pay any bills so he has no portfolio so in other words you oh jesus so in other words your husband got you as a pretty stay-at-home wife a wife who's doing real estate oh my god This sounds pretty sorry, man. I sound sorry. This uh, this situation is yeah because it sounds pretty sorry. Your husband is making money. You doing real estate wherever you pop up, but you don't have to pay bills. You don't have any kids at home, so your day is spent pretty much doing what it is you want to do. Your husband is gone for weeks or months at a time. You don't even have a man to manage. And then you sent your daughter away. And you sent your daughter away not to live in Bel Air with Aunt Viv and Uncle Phil. You sent her away to live with your self-proclaimed mama's boy, baby daddy, to live in the mama apartment. Well, it wasn't it wasn't as. Yeah, they live in an apartment, right? They live in an apartment, right? They live in an apartment, right? Yeah. You got a house. You got a house? Yes. Yes. 
And they, how many people in that apartment? Your dad, her father, her mother, wow. his mother, his I baby mama, see. six people in one apartment. Mm -hmm. You're trash. Straight up trash. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is trash, ma'am. You put you put your daughter in an apartment with six yeah. people, and you got. I don't mean. I, I've tried to I, I, trust it, it me. Wasn't, it wasn't willing, is what I'm. I, it wasn't like I was like here go. Like before I was even married, I was living in my mom, my mom's basement. So we were doing like he had her for a week, I had her for a week, but I live. We live like an hour away from each other. So at some three point, years he's been there, ma'am. Three school. years, Jesus, ma'am. You said you've been married five years. She's been gone three. You're in a house. It would be better for her to be in a house and not an apartment. It would be better for her to be with her mama and yeah, not be chaos. It's not, it doesn't matter where she wants to go. It's what's best for the child. And maybe, just maybe, what you're resisting telling us is it's better for her to be in chaos than with you. I might accept that based upon listening to this. No. And I'm not just saying it was trash just to be, to no, be provocative, ma'am. This is crazy. No. No, I, I, I definitely don't disagree prospectively. But looking at going to court, so that's what I was really looking at, how the court system will look at how he's been performing versus my performance and putting that together. And during those times, like he never faulted, he was always stable. So- But you also mom, said like, he's a her mama's boy. To beat him you said a mama's boy, ma'am. It ain't, yeah, it, 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 you didn't yeah, say- Yeah, but he's always held down a, a job. Excuse me, hold on, hold on, hold on, ma'am. You said he's a mama's boy. And I'm just, and I let that rock, but they're living in an apartment with six people. And you got a home. Yeah. But that wasn't, that's not enough to win a, a case in court, a custody battle, because that's what it was going to turn into, a custody battle. All right, battle. well, cool. She and didn't, she, wa wasn't. she wanted, she wanted to... She wanted to. She wanted to go with your dad. She wanted to go with your, uh, with your, with her, with your dad. Yeah. Hmm. We yeah. Had the conversation. Well. Okay. Well, ma'am, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I hope it works out for your daughter. Thank you. I, I really do because this sounds crazy, but you know what. I'll also say that there are lots of things that people may not know. So I hope it works out. I, I, I hope it works Thanks, out. I really do. All right. Have a good one. But it does you sound, too. it does sound rather crazy. Trash. I mean, that would, the, the tr situation sounded trash, not you, but that's just crazy. It just sounds crazy no, to people. I get it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. I mean, no, I you know, Thank all you. right, appreciate it. Look, man, I, I, I will say that, you know, being a parent is not easy. Not easy. Not easy, not easy, not easy, not easy, not easy. All right, uh, but anyway, did I miss something in there, folks? Oh, people are asking me what's going on, uh, the cash app. Somebody hit, hit cash app. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Look to the ladies, I want you guys to understand something, okay? Regardless of my personal point of view on things, this platform exists solely because men want relationships. Okay? Kevin has his views on things. But I try to represent, I try to do my best to represent what the larger swath of men who are out here wanting. 
And when I talk to a woman who's married, I tend to hold back because that woman's already with somebody. I reserve my own personal judgment. I try to keep it as professional as possible. But I do have opinions, too. And, you know, I just think it's. I think it's I think it's I think it's I think it's sad. I think it's sad. Mm, so, um, what's the question you have? But we'll go on. Hello. 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 How are you? Hey. Uh, I'm good. I'm good, Kevin. How you doing? I'm all right. Um, what, what, what's your question? So, um, I'm just a bit confused um, about where, what type of male archetype I am. Like, what kind of male? What kind of male archetype? Okay. Yeah, and and like what type of, I guess, moving forward, woman I should be looking for? Because um, I, I don't feel I really fit into the archetypes that you mentioned. Okay. Um, we're talking about selling out, but go ahead. How old are you? I'm 27. All right. Um, you're in the Esquire phase of life. So, and what male archetype? There's a refined rake and rogue. What, what archetype? What's confusing about the archetypes? Um, I guess like I'm kind of jumping in between the two. I'm kind of jumping in between, um, uh, the rugged arch archetype and the rogue archetype. I mean, the, I say, I say I mean, rake, the rogue. not rogue, not it's a rake, it's refined rake and rogue. It's not, but rugged. Are you an outdoorsman? Yeah. So that's the thing. I'm, I'm in, I'm in the military and I'm pretty active and I like, um, but I'm actually going to be, I'm, I'm probably leaving the military soon. Um, and I'm kind of having a complete different career change. So All right. This, I'm I'm going, going, okay. This isn't the, this isn't that broadcast. I mean, but I'm trying to yeah. get a will down, but. Oh, um, you can yeah, have aspects of, hold on. You can have aspects of other archetypes, but somebody, you still fit roughly into one of those categories. And if it doesn't, Maybe you're still just not in development yet. At 27 years old, you're still in process as far as I'm concerned. And then being in the military, the military, as valuable as it is, it gives the military is its, its own world. And it doesn't map over to the private sector comfortably, meaning you could be a battlefield medic. You could be one of the most accomplished surgeons on the battlefield but if you came back to the states you would still have to go get an undergraduate degree and go to medical school to do stuff you're already qualified to do so um conversation for another time though appreciate it guys yeah, understand time, Kevin. no problem understand something guys you we you have until 30 to roughly figure this one out sean unmute yourself you got until you got until 40 to really figure out who you are as a man that's the beautiful thing. Sean, go ahead and meet yourself. Hello. Hello. Who's this? Sean, you're not, your, your audio is not working. And tomorrow you need to unmute yourself. Sean, your audio needs to unmute. Hello. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? You muted yourself again, dude. Oh my, hello. Stop muting yourself. Yeah, you're hearing me? How old Sorry, are you? It keeps doing it by itself. I'm How 29. What's the question? Um, I just want to know 
if I'm doing the right things. Uh, since I've started listening to you, there are a lot of changes that I've made in my life. Um, I lost a ton of weight, started hitting the gym. You got to get to the question, man. You got to get to the question. You got to get to the question. All right. I, I just want to know if I'm doing the right thing. So, um, that's, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Uh, am I making the right step towards becoming the type of man that is worthwhile? I don't know. I know it's a I don't know, man. I, know it's a big I, question. I don't know how to answer that question, man. Yeah, I, I know, don't know how to answer question. that question. I don't know what you guys um, expect. Okay, man, I don't know how to answer that question. You're doing the stuff to do stuff to make yourself worthwhile. I don't get it, guys. Don't come in, guys, do me a favor. Don't come in with big broad questions like that. What's the meaning of life? I can't answer those kind of things at this point. This is a uh, hello. Unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm well. How about you? I am well. What's going on? Not. Yes. Um, so the topic about whether or not black men should start selling out. I uh -huh. believe that I believe that they should. Okay. Why do you think they should? Because there aren't any, there aren't much options, apparently. Just giving an example, I was speaking with my nephew um, a few months ago, asked him about girls who he was interested in. And um, he admitted that although he wanted to date the Black girls at his school, his exact words were that they were too rough and too ratchet and mm -hmm. I wouldn't want that for him so I the same way I would tell him to divest if those are his options I can't help but direct others to do so as well right so what what are we going to tell the women though We've got to govern our daughters accordingly um, and each other. We have to really start having honest yet difficult discussions with each other about our conduct. Um, it can be difficult to do at times. Uh, I will admit that I had to start recognizing certain, certain traits that I possessed and mm -hmm. in order to correct them, um, some of it came from watching you. Um, a portion of it um, came from just recognizing certain things about myself when I start um, uh, when I start undergraduate school. Um, I remember listening to you one time. You said that a lot of us are introduced to feminism mm -hmm. uh, college, <laughs> yeah, and. Um, that's when it was introduced to me. And I I won't lie, I fell for it. I really did. Um, you fell for what? The whole ugh, men are trash trope and, you know, the strong feminine thing and, well, the sh not strong feminine, the strong independent woman thing. I fell for, for all of that. Um, but it started feeling disingenuous mm -hmm. at some point. And I realized that I had fallen into that groupthink trap. Okay. And how do you think you're going to improve that? Um, well, I have taken the steps. Like one thing I noticed about myself, I'm, I'm married currently. Um, one thing I learned about myself was that I did have a tendency to question things that men would tell me or question certain direction from them or just be dismissive mm -hmm. altogether. Um, I realized that I had that problem when I started dating my now husband. He's an extremely intelligent man. And but I found that at times he would say things that would make perfect sense but for some reason 
I would have a rebuttal or a different solution or some, or I would pose some sort of alternative just to essentially question his um whatever solution or thought or ideology he presented. Are you are you said you're just, married? Yes. Okay, how long have you been married? Uh since November, Thanksgiving Day. Congratulations. Any children? Yeah, just one. Um how old? He's nine. All right. So um you say that you would have this, the, you notice this rebelliousness dealing with your husband? Yeah. Um, when we first started dating about four years ago, um, mm -hmm. I would often, I noticed that I would question him. And I, I, I consider myself to be rather introspective. I, I like to check myself before others have to do so. Uh -huh. um, and I don't know what it was. He didn't really bring it up to me and I didn't allow it to happen too often um, before I put a stop to Is your it. husband the father but, of your child? What was that? Is your husband the father of your child? No, he is not. Okay, there you go. There you go. I mean, a lot of, I think a lot of women need to understand that the, the way having children before you get married, um, you already come in preloaded with a man's input on you. And it may not be your intention, but so many women already come preloaded with like, you know, uh, you've already, I mean, it's not supposed to happen. We should, we have made becoming a mother and my mother was a single mother. We made being a mother before marriage so commonplace and we don't look at the psychological things that happens to where you've had to live a life on your own for so long now you got to listen to a man and you didn't even have to listen to a man to make a baby so uh y'all planning on having any additional children he's not interested we are not interested we okay. both have one child okay you both have one child his child is where He's here with us. Okay. So, and you're how old again? 34. All right. Well, you got one child that lives with you and you one child, and he has a child as well? Does this, does this child live with you guys? Yes, he does. How old is he? 19. Well, that's not, that's not the same. Those are big differences. Yeah, they are big differences. So what was the reason? So the reason for getting married was what? Um, we, we, well, first and foremost, we love each other. Mm -hmm. um, we've known each other for... I believe 14 years, 15, 14 years. Mm -hmm. um, we're just very familiar with each other. We knew that we meshed well with each other. Um, and it was just a smart thing to do based on our compatibility mm -hmm. and our, our ability to coexist with each other and cooperate with each other. Hmm. But no more kids. Yeah, no more kids. So, I'm not huh? Huh? Not all the way opposed to it, but the hubby definitely is. Where is his? Where's your child's father? Uh, he lives in another state. But so, he's extremely active. Huh? He's extremely what? But he's active, um, as much as he can be, considering the distance. So you you got the winning. So you got the winning hand here. You got married. You ain't having no more kids. <laughs> you got a, you got a man to help you uh, with, you know, the day to day of the kid, and you got that. That's that's too much advantage for one woman to have. I think. I think for you to question anything, why are you questioning the thing? 
No, I'm not. I'm not questioning anything. I'm. I'm just calling in to. No, you said you, you know. said you got married. You said you got married in November, and you used to question a lot of things. Oh well, yeah. Initially with him, um, only because that that was a result of dealing with someone, and well, I don't want to speak ill of. Right, um, right, right. But that, as you stated, the <laughs> the weight of another man's influence on my psyche is what caused my well, initial um, well. interaction. So I'm. I guess what I'm trying to also understand is what is he gonna get out of all this? He don't want. To, he, he don't want any more kids. No, and he, he and you don't want any. I'm not opposed to it. Um, I'm really not. But hmm. immediately, what comes to mind immediately is a no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, I'll say it this way: that you know. Um, you kind of got a good deal, man. I mean, you got a supportive child's father. You married. You don't have to have another kid, and you got somebody to help you with the day to day. I hope he's. I don't think you should be questioning nothing. You, you, oh, you, 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 you lucky. You, you lucked out. You got a good deal. <laughs> no, I recognize that. I recognize that, and you know, I treat. I treat my husband with the utmost respect. Like I tell him all the time how proud of him I am and mm-hmm. I, and just how how I'm the lucky one. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you are because I'm like, I'm trying to, what, what do you get out of this deal? Other than, you know, consistent sex, but so what? I mean, we grown folks, it ain't nothing. You, you, yeah. should be, you should be bringing something else to the table. I mean, I hope you can cook or something. I mean. Oh, I throw down. Okay, something. I mean, he ain't got no babies out of it, but he like it. I love it. All right, chicka, take it easy. All right. Um, here's the thing, man. Um, selling out, gentlemen. Selling out for your own to 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 femininity. That gives you. That's what I'm saying. Even if I was talking to the last woman, I want you to. Go before the previous woman. The women are supposed to be an asset. How are women to, how is, uh, if a woman in your life is not an asset and she's not an asset and peace, what's the point? And so many women today are not used to being assets. They're used to getting what they want, doing what they want. And that's and if you get women who are that way, that's kind of a masculine trait. So thought provoking broadcast. I'm not going to hold this long. I think I think you guys understand where I was kind of going with this. Um, You guys understand the overall point of it. All right, tomorrow and the rest of the week is going to be dope. Um, did Amira, did you have a question? Did you have a question? Um, let's see, Amira. I have a question. Okay, let's see. Let me see what, let me see. Mm. Femininity is going to be in high demand. High demand. And, you know, I think if a woman doubles down on her femininity, especially in the West, it's like... um, (laughs) Can you imagine being the only feminine woman in the West? It's like, okay, you can you can pretty much name your price. Or actually, I've often said this. You can go down. (laughs) 
you can go you can go down and um looks to go up in femininity. You can go down and looks to go up in cooperation. So all right folks. It's been cool, it's been good, it's been great, but I got to run until the next time. Peace. Your Godfather is gone. Hit the fade. Oh, Jesus, on the wrong thing. Let's do this one. Gone. Pew. It didn't work on that one. All right.